for now, uh, I'd like to um, indicate the opportunity for walking meditation, walk around, um, and first of all just get to the core of it, this body, walking. Now if we don't, remember there's a very um, powerful cultural bias that we've all um, been um, affected by. Now you've heard of sexism and racism, and this is called headism. It's another form of discrimination, bodily discrimination. Headism. And actually this is the basis of all the other ones. <laughs> it's the bit which says I'm on top, everything else has got to do what I say, I'm underneath and everything else is secondary to me. And headism. <laughs> and head so the head sort of drags the body around underneath it. Yeah. And of course headism comes extremely painful when we meditate. As this is generally a thing that really goes uh, berserk. Uh, so starting to um, overcome headism by operating the body from the body rather than from the head, the whole body. The head is allowed to be there, we all have them, but we like the head to just take its place in the assembly rather than be feel it's the leader of things. And it's okay. So when we walk, primarily the head doesn't have to do very much at all. Just keep an eye out to not walk into trees or cars or other people. Primarily, so you want to just get the head, just, that's, your, that's all, that's all that's needed. Don't need a uh, discussion, don't need an analysis, don't need a critique, don't need instructions. Just, you know, thank you very much. We'll figure this out from the neck down, right? <laughs> So, let's try and get how the body's going to walk. Now, and the head generally will search for a direction to walk in, but we don't really need one. Um, we'll say, for just for simplicity's sake, we'll take a, you find a relatively straight line. Yeah, you know, 30 paces or so, walk back just to contemplate walking. And that's it. You know. Instead, we're going to uh, we'll almost unlearn walking. So, well, what if you didn't know how to do it? How, how would it happen? So you want to get somewhere. Where are you going to get this thing to go? Where's, where's the initial, where's it going to come from? It's going to come from somewhere down here, isn't it? Yeah, so it's coming to you. Well, you're going to come onto one leg. And how do you know that? You feel the earth element becomes very strong in one leg, affirming, weight bearing, change. Mm. With that change, we sense the, the you know the ability to hold ground, the downward direction. But then, also, say if your weight's coming onto your right leg. And the signal can begin in your left leg, which comes in the under arch of the foot. It's going to want to lift. That's the signal. Yeah. And that signal runs up into the left hip. And the foot's come off the ground. Okay. Try to get a sense of, it's not just lifting a lump of meat from the hip, but also Something in the foot rises. This is the the under arch. Something lift, lift, yeah. lift. They practice that. Just learning to walk. Lift. Now the other thing is going to happen. To get forward, you're going to have to swing. Swing through the hips. So these, of course, are all synchronized. You lift because there's that sense of the firmness there. Now it's very light one side. You can swing. Swing. 
you swing like that, and it's gone on a place. You swing, and then touching, and shifting the earth, and lift to the other leg. Swing. And uh, it's many different features within that to make it smooth. So it's not machine-like, it's, it's, there are many different qualities of the body and the uh, whole body participates to make it smooth. This is the, the water quality of the body, it means when one thing does something, everything else listens up. Yeah? For, to, do it, to do it, when you do it properly, when the body does it properly in harmony, everything in the body is at least aware it's going on. And often it will do subtle things to, to, to make that movement more fluid. And one of the things that occurs is as your right leg goes forward, your right shoulder tips back, so that not all your weight is coming forward in one go. Yeah, there's a slight way in which the weight of that leg is ameliorated by the shoulder drawing back. So it softens the descent. And then you come forward and the body swings, turns like that. Now this effect, the, so we haven't really thrust forward, we've actually just kind of lightened and swung and the forward more or less happens by itself. So much so, if you stand, just stand, and then come on to, you see, your left leg, bend your left knee, so the weight-bearing leg should bend, and then just lift your right leg, notice your feet are about, if you pull your right shoulder back and relax, and push your right foot down, you notice it's moved forward. So just the effect, you can move your, your leg with your foot. If you turn your right shoulder back, and let your right leg be light, it comes forward by itself. So that's the quality of the synchronized. You don't need a lot of this pushing. The body operates by itself. Now, of course, you can give it a bit more if you want, and just experiment with lightness of walking, wholeness of walking, fluidity of walking, non-distractedness of walking, so we're not somewhere else, we're not occupying a space in front of us, front is open, if you keep the front open, and you can even sort of, you know, imagine or bring to mind you're walking, you know, like one centimeter or into an open space in front of you. It's opening all the time. It's not, you're not walking to a place that's 10 feet in front of you or to a tree or to, or for an hour or half an hour. That's occupying a space that should be left spacious. As soon as that space fills up, you're in trouble. You're in stress. You're in push. You're in got to. You're in how long. You're in how does this thing work. As soon as you fill that space up. So keep that space open. We're not, you know, So you see, you can you, know, you can even do walking meditation in twenty-five other people in the room. So bearing the whole, trying to just be aware of the whole thing. When I say the whole thing, it doesn't mean a microscopic focus on any, the wholeness of it. Like, do you have still have a back? Is it still there? It's quiet behind you. 
soft sense of something there. There's a face in front of you still open. And the thing's flowing. Walking, mindful, walking meditation. Uh, you know, so as you find your way with that, then practices, maybe the head starts unfolding its stuff as it does, you just empty it into this experience. If you don't resist it, you don't deal with it, you just have this experience of, of an aware form that's carrying qualities, that receives the thoughts, the moods, the wellings up, the distracted, the tightened, the distracted energies, the dullness, and don't fight them. And just re- receive all that in this form. It, it, that definitely is the that which will help these to be dissolved, to be absorbed, you know, filtered. Maybe one or two things seem to become important, but you've, you've filtered out a lot of stuff. And that's kind of, that's what it's about, really. So, once you get in the hang of how to move a body around, then um, let's take this thing out on the road. Put your L plates on. Um, and find some, some space you want to determine as, you know, your walking area. And it might mean you walk 10 minutes or so, somewhere or the other. The walking periods will be fairly long to allow you to get to a place you want to walk and then get back again. Uh, so, uh, it's now, well, on the world of conventional time, 10 to 4, let's get back about quarter to 5. Then it's bells, clocks, buzzers, flares, flags waving, or just watches. <laughs> so uh, find, some, find a, uh, a place to walk and do your walk. And you know, if it, you can always come back and sit. If it, you know, don't have to, don't have to walk till quarter to five. If you don't want to, you can come back earlier. But I feel you can be out there. Quarter to five, we'll just group together. We sit together for 15 minutes.